Hey everyone, Tim once again with the Word of Life Church. Our address is 3342 Midway Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. That is the Word of Life Church. Our pastor there is Junior Mount, and as always, on behalf of Pastor Mount, the congregation and myself, we want to offer you an open invitation to come out and be with us for service. Had a good midweek service last night. Uh, Pastor Mount preached a good message, and uh, uh, you know, uh, always a good service. As I always say, you know, he's over oh, the time. You always say that. Well, as I always say, you know, when <laughs> the word of God is being preached, and the spirit of God is moving, and uh, you know. Uh, you're gathered with your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a good service, right? You know, uh, can you not say the same thing about your? Oh no, you know, it, I'm there with so and so, and you know, I can barely stand sitting beside him, and you know, it's always just pre some same same things being preached, and you know, I just don't even know why I go. <laughs> you know what? That's the attitude of a lot of people. So here you go, right out of the gate, just kind of judging people. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you. What I've seen and what I've heard and what I've been told by people. You know? <laughs> uh, and that's a shame to feel that way. As I've said and as many times before, you know, people say, well, and I've heard it stated a lot. Well, I've got to, I've got to go to church tonight. No, you don't got to go to church. <laughs> that's not correct. You know, or let's I'll, I'll say it properly. Well, I have to go to church tonight. I have to attend service tonight. If not, people will start talking, thinking I'm doing something wrong, or I'm doing this, or I'm doing that. No, you don't have to attend. You're not constrained to attend. Yeah, people might say something about you. that. That's the wrong spirit for you to be in and those people to be in. For one thing, they should be concerned that you're not there and they should be praying. And if you're not there, they should be calling and saying, hey, is everything okay? Not being nosy, but with genuine Christian brother and sisterly concern that is everything okay? Are you sick? Did something happen? Did something, you know, do you need help? That's what it should be like. And unfortunately, a lot of that, it's not that way anymore. Unfortunately, a lot of times, if you're out and you don't come, see, we're big on and I'll say this, and a lot of our other churches are big on the, the right way of doing things. And I'll say that, and you're saying, well, you're just bragging on your church. No, I'm just saying this is the right way to do things. Oh, sorry, I keep hitting the table. If you're not going to be there, and I, I've been guilty of this in the past before, and a lot of us are, but the right way to do things, if, <laughs> if you're not going to be there, is to call someone, or t at least pick up the phone and text someone say, we're sick, or this is going on, that's going on, we've had problems, and we don't think we're going to be able to make it tonight, and that way there's no problem. And, you know, I don't say, hey, we're sick, pray for us, or we're having family, something's going on, and we're not going to be here, please remember us in prayer. You know, and as I've said, I've been guilty of it, and many and many others, and that way there's no, there's no room for the enemy to work in that. See my point of the matter? That's the whole point of that entire issue right there is not allowing the enemy to play tricks on your mind in a situation like that and see the issue I was talking about about the people saying well if the person's out well they're probably out doing this and doing that anyway well the enemy's in that situation to begin with if a person and people are thinking that about their fellow brother and sister in Christ, the enemy's already in that situation to begin with. So there needs to be some house cleaning <laughs> in that type of situation anyway. Amen? Let's go ahead and get, before we get on, before we get on the soapbox, why don't we move on? Uh, let me go ahead and give you a church service announcements. We have a Sunday school at 10 a.m., worship service at 11 a.m. We come back at 6 p.m. for our evening service. And we also have our midweek service, which we had last night, Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Now, uh, as I said before, uh, Christmas Eve, uh, which falls on Sunday, uh, of course, 24th, of course, uh, we will not be having our... Uh, 
mind, <laughs> trouble mind going blank sometimes. That happened to you guys. Uh, we will not be having our uh, our regularly scheduled um, Sunday morning, our Sunday school service at 10 a.m. We will be having our 11 o'clock or 11 a.m. morning worship service. Not the 10 a.m. Sunday school, but we, we will be having our 11 a.m. worship service and the 6 a, the 6 p.m. evening service will be canceled. So we'll only be having one service that day, and that is the 11 a.m. worship service on uh, Sunday the 24th, which is Christmas Eve. We're just having the 11 a.m. morning worship service on Sunday the 24th, Christmas Eve. So that, you know, people traveling and, you know, spending time with families and, you know, a lot of people will be cooking and stuff like that. So uh, I did say I'd get the <laughs> the the that announcement right. And if it, was, it wasn't right, I was going to change it. But that is right. So I did get it. So uh, give me props for that. So at any rate. Uh, so just uh, remember that in case, you know, I know some, some churches may even be canceling their services for that day and would want to come visit. So. Uh, if anybody does, you know, pass that along. Anybody says, "Hey, I'm going to visit the Word of Life Church on Christmas Eve," uh, so if anybody does, just pass that along. If you'll know that, and you can tell them in case you know somebody says that. Hey, I hate for somebody to show up, you know, like six o'clock on Christmas Eve, and you know, the church be black, you know, dark, nobody there. You know, I, that, 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 I, I would hate that. That that would, you know, that, that would really bother me. So. Uh, you know, that's just one announcement and we'll try to announce it via Facebook and, you know, text to people and everything like that. So, uh, I, I figured I'd do it on here to, you know, to people who ever li would listen to send out any to other people as well. So, uh, figuring I would get a little, and it's this is kind of just, I don't know, just kind of come onto my mind and my heart. And it, it really consists of a question. Asking kind of myself and you guys out there. Now I know we're getting ready in the season, and you know, it, uh, laying aside whenever you think the true birth time of our Lord Jesus, our Lord Yeshua, however you want to say his name, you know, his name means Savior, salvation. He, he's our Lord, our Savior, our King, our God, our all in all, you know. Laying aside, as I said, when, whenever you think his true birth is. We're getting ready to celebrate his birth. You know, you know that, was, that was decided for us by, you know, the Catholic Church long ago that to supplant the time, you know, the, the holiday times, you know, from, that the Romans had and other uh, pagans had and everything like that and they were, you know but you know there's people that, that that will fight against that and say no this was the time and everything well you know you just have to study get into it and study it for yourself you know and see what you think studying's good it's good for you <laughs> so laying aside all that we're getting ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord and uh, time that we share with family and gathering friends and you know uh it's a good time. It's a good time to be with family, friends, and you know, and of course, our brothers. And, of course, absolutely, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And some people, as I've said before, are closer to your brothers and sisters in Christ than you are your blood family. Uh, in some cases, I've heard a lot of people say that. Say, yeah, well, you know, I'm closer to my my church family than I am my real family. And some people don't even have any of their blood family left. And, you know, their church family is their family. So, getting ready to celebrate that. But, so this may seem a little bit, maybe, off. Not, not, not well, how, how do I say this? Maybe a little bit weird. Not in keeping with that might be not a holiday type message, but it can be a little bit, I guess. But the question would be posing to myself and to you guys. How close are we 
or how how close do you think how close do I think, how close are we to our departure now laying aside okay laying aside the thought that I might when I'm finished with this video get up you know get my keys and my stuff and, and go out and you know go down the street and have an accident and enter into eternity you know they say how close biblically are we close to our departure departure if I can talk our biblical departure when the Lord is coming back and he's calling and he's going to blow that trumpet and we the dead in Christ are going to rise first and we that are alive and remain are going to be called up to be with the Lord biblically how close do you guys think the right thing and how can we look and see in God's Word how can we look at today's headlines how, how can we look prophetically and see and look in God's Word and have a discussion and look at it and bring stuff out and think and reasonably come out with some thoughts about how close we are to our departure. Say, so, well, brother, ten people's talked about that and you know brought that out in a Sunday school and preached on it, and you know, you know, people have argued about it and debated about it for you know years. And well, let's do a little bit of reading. What do you say? See what we can bring out. Now, I know this might not be this big shouting and, you know, just, you know, preaching, you know, and, and, well, that's, you know, not everything, not every preaching, not every teaching is, you know, da, 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 boom, 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 and, you know, and the main thing is, is we get something out of it, and, you know, uh, sometimes things is, it, 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 and it provokes some thought to where it might provoke you to study, to get in God's Word, which we should be doing. Remember what I said the other day in the video? Sometimes we should stay off. And what? Yeah, I'm shaking the computer because I'm having a point here. We should stay off these, you know, as like gaming and doing, other, you know, like being on playing a game on the computer or, you know, staying off the, you know, you know, whatever, you know. Whatever sites you get on, you know, or sports sites, you know, people get on these fantasy football and, you know, reading, you know, people, you know, sports, my goodness, you talk about it. Well, get, well anything, get gaming, sports, whatever, you know, and, and a lot of times these right here, you know, picking that up right there, by, by the way, it's on silent. And right now it's sitting here buzzing, people trying to text and phone calls and everything, you know, never fails. Most of the time, and I always complain about it, most of the time when I get in a car and I start, I, this thing can be silent for for an entire half a day. It won't go, no, it won't, no one will send me a text, no phone calls. I'll get in a car and start driving. This thing will blow up. <laughs> but anyway, but that's an addiction as well. As I said, you can go in restaurants, you can go in that place, you can go at a church. Mm. People put the phones down. People put them on silent. Nothing bothers me. I, now, not, not I'm talking about one church in particular. I'm just talking about you know when I, especially when if I'm if I'm visiting a church or something like that. You know, I, I, I honestly think, and it's a sad thing. I, I know this is kind of off point, but I'm just saying, just you know. And I haven't said this in a long time, but let me let me just let me slide this in there before we move forward. Instead of the pastor of the church or the one of the deacon board or something or one of the deacons having to put a note at the door saying, "Please silence your phone before you enter the church," why don't you just do it? Respect the house of God. Respect the pastor when he's trying to preach and the phone sitting there going ding 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 ding. ding. That's that's disruptive, okay? I'm just saying, okay? Not trying to be mean, not trying, I'm not pointing anybody out, I'm not pointing any church out, I'm, I'm just saying in general, okay? 
you do it when you go to the movies, don't you? Sometimes. Because it flashes across the screen. Please silence all cell phones and mobile devices, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So, you know, you should do it when you come into the house of God more than anything. Amen? Okay, let's get off there. <laughs> Point made. Let's go. Second Thessalonians, and you guys probably know where I'm going with when I go to this. Let's read this here. Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 1. So the question is, how close do you think, and let this go in, and let this provoke a thought in you and maybe cause you to study and see where you are in your thoughts about it and even in your walk of faith and really and truly let it provoke you to study more and more and cause you to look and see where you are in your walk of faith saying, well, why would you want to do it? Well, because. How close are you to the Lord? Where where are you at in your walk of faith? Are you as close as you need to be, where you want to be? Where the Lord wants you to be? Say, well, brother, I'm, you know, I'm saved and you know, I'm going to church. Well, okay. Are you doing what the Lord wants you to do? Are you walking in His will? Are you doing... The job that he has put you, are you walking on that narrow way? Or are you standing still? You know, I know we're to put the, our hands to the plow and plowing and moving forward and we're not to look back. But is that plow slowing down? Is it almost at a standstill? I'm not saying you're getting ready to look back. Sorry, hair's tickling my nose. I know you're not getting, I'm not saying you're getting ready to look back because what it say, if you, if you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. It's not what I'm saying, but are you slowing down? Are you allowing the cares and the hindrances? Are you allowing this upcoming, let me say this here, are you allowing this upcoming holiday? Have you been going to the stores with the credit card going sink, sink, sink? Or if it's got the chip, I don't know if they do that in credit cards. I don't, I don't even have any credit cards. Don't want them. You know, in the end of the chip that you're going to be paying on for half a year next year and by the time you get them paid off it's going to be Christmas again if we're still around or if you're still around you stay in debt all year long because of it are you allowing the hindrances and the cares of life to slow you down see if you do that the enemy, the enemy is, is pressing already against you so are you allowing other things to press against you on top of that. It's no wonder that people are in the shape that they are these days. Black Friday. Shopping. Seeing pictures. People, you know, the, the, the money shots that these people get in the media, showing the media, shows these people pushing other people away and they've got this look of anger and hatred and got their mouth open like screaming at the top of their lungs pushing these other people away trying to get to this last TV or something like that. People getting into fights. Showing my age here but how many people remember that I'm talking to remember well here in Knoxville a store called Hills H-I-L-L-S down on Broadway. I don't know if they were other places, but here, do, does, does anyone remember the great Cabbage Patch Doll Wars of the early 1980s? Probably 81, 82. The great Cabbage Patch Doll Wars. People in thoughts over those things. The stupid doll. People getting into fist fights over the things. People doing had done that since people getting into fights over. Well, I'm getting my son or daughter this for Christmas, and you're not going to stop me. So pop. Devil has blinded their mind. Got over uh, stuff right here. They're not. They're looking at this stuff right. Looking at this stuff right here. Not you know pointing toward the TV and you know whatever. They're not looking. They're not watching for the coming 
of our Lord. What does he say? Watch and pray. Amen. Talks about keeping all the virgins and you know all that. You know, you know, read that in there and study about it. I don't want to go into all that right now because we're, we're at this point right now. But he, the Lord, He told us told us all that we needed to know. If we just get in there and draw it out and study it and look at it, He taught us. Told us. It says, Second Thessalonians, excuse me, 2 and verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. Now see, even at that point back then, they were in expectation. And how long ago was this? A long time ago, wasn't it? When the Lord came? We say some that 2,000 some odd years ago, give or take. Well, we can say 2016, 2017 years ago, give or take now, at least. I'll scroll down here and hope I don't minimize the thing here. Verse 2, it said, That ye be not soon shaken in mind. That still holds today. See, because we got a lot of people going around. You know, people saying, oh, you know, we've heard this since we were young. The Lord's coming. The Lord's coming. We've heard this since we were little. And he's still not come. We've heard this since the beginning. You know, all things continue from the beginning of creation. And he's still not come yet. Well, at least they acknowledge the creation, that it was created. It says, be not soon shaken in mind. Don't be shaken in mind. No, he's still coming. And though we might not see it. You might not see it. I might not see it. Knowing that he is and he, he will come one day. But oh, if we just... Something happened. If you hear my little dog snoring over here. That's, that's the noise. If you hear it, I don't know if the mic's going to pick it up or not. Even We might not see it. Oh, but glorious if we do. Amen. Think about that. Oh, I, can you? You just can't. You can't pick. I mean, you can. You can sort of picture it in your mind, but uh, you can't. The glory and the power and what it's actually going to look like. My goodness, son. Wow. That's you know. <laughs> watch and pray. My wow. Taken up. Boom say goodbye and we lift up don't be shaking in mind say, soon not be shaking or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand now we got to dissect this a little bit because it's talking about it says nor by letter as from us now apparently from what we gather, a teaching at this time, there was people saying that the resurrection had already happened, and this, you know, the letter. There was there was false letters and false that people saying that this had already happened, and that you know they had missed the boat, you know, missed the train, you know, missed the, all that, and it had already happened because that's what it said. Not, he was talking to the church here at Thessalonica. But we can, we can see it wouldn't be in here to us as well. See, the more and more we go along, we still we're trying to push away the word of God, saying, "Oh, this was just for this time and this time and this time." Does it really apply to us and everything? See, that's the problem. We're pushing away areas of God's word, taking it here, taking this part out. So, okay, this applies to this time. And this time, and this time, and this time, and this time. Okay, well, some things we can see that and do that. Like in Old Testament times, okay, yeah, there were certain things under the old law that we don't do anymore. I get that. But it's there to show us. It was, talks about, it was the schoolmaster, right, to show us 
right? The schoolmaster to teach us, showing the law, that that couldn't save us. We couldn't live by that law today. If we tried to live by the law today, the absolute law today, without grace, how many of us would be here? Would you be here? Would I be here? No. It was the first time I would have been disobedient to my parents. Let's just say, let's just call it like it is. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't want to say, well, you know, that's just, uh, you know, and a lot of people, that's where a lot of people stumble when you say something when when they read something like that they they they, they stumble at, at, at that thought but it's there hey god's god we're his creation we go by his rules if that was still his rule then that we would follow it no matter what this is his world we're his creation i don't care what you say what you do we would follow it it would be his rules you know, his, his way, you know, because the old saying, you know, his way or the highway. That's it. But thank God for grace that we have the opportunity. If we mess up, we have a chance to repent. We hit a stumbling block and fall flat on our face. We can repent. We can stand up, dust ourselves off, and move on. Hallelujah. But it's talking about, it said, don't be troubled. Don't be shaken, mind. Don't be troubled, neither by spirit or by word. Don't be troubled by spirit coming upon you. As I've said before, there be spirits many coming to you, saying, "Oh, this, you know, oh, this is not, you know, never going to happen," and you know, people coming to you and in the wrong spirit. has a false word there's so much you can get out of this well too much and not, not enough time <laughs> but in here you know for, for them it, it was it said nor by letter as from us as the day of Christ is at hand because there was a lot a lot to go on still is Saying, oh, really, it could happen at any day. It could happen any day. Well, there's... Now listen. Now listen, because... You, you, got, you, got, you, you can't just build a doctrine. You can't just build the doctrine on just one or two verses. There's some have. There's some people. There's some people. Some churches. Some people. Some cults. I'm not calling any church. I'm not calling, That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there's some actual... And you, when I'm saying cult, I'm talking about cult. Some cults that have built doctrines and, you know, just taking verses and, you know, I would, I would find some, I could say some cults as taking verses out of s several religious, I'll just say, texts, mishmashing them together twisting them around each other and putting their own ideas along with them and you're following them because they this one person or these several people saying they have the only true way and to follow them wouldn't you agree Charles Manson who died recently by the way uh, Jim Jones the Kool-Aid man you know, poison. Uh, you know the Branch Davidian. What's you know what's his name? Uh, Correct, David Koresh, who actually said he was Jesus Christ. By the way, there's one guy actually. I don't know his name, but he uh, we saw him the other day. Actually, picture him, and he's actually wearing a white robe, and he has long hair and the traditional mustache and beard, and he. Looks the traditional Caucasian Jesus that everybody has a picture of on their wall, or a lot of people does, which is not the Lord Jesus, by the way. 
that's just a painting that that uh, that was commissioned a long time ago you know to paint it but that's not the Lord by the way and by the way this this guy that's walking around the people's all around him and there was people flocked around him by the way fooled which we can segue from that into this next next verse verse 3 let no man deceive you by any means a lot of people a lot of people being deceived nowadays man deception is running my goodness rampant example let no man deceive you by any means there are so many means out there I've got to tell this anyone heard of what's called pranic healing P-R-A-N-I-C if you ha if you haven't And I'm not I'm not promoting this by the way do not take this out of context and anybody that's trolling out there do not take this out of context and cut this video up and saying that I am because I will find you <laughs> okay and report you okay pranic healing look it up and see what I'm talking about basically what it amounts to as these people will stand there or lay there and these people will sit there and do this and they will run their hands over them not touching them for the most part and they'll run their hands over them and they're supposedly pulling the negative energy <laughs> off of their out, out or out of their body and there's even one guy that has a bowl of salt water near and he, he pulls the negative energy out and then when he gets to the end of it he cuts it it's invisible by the way you can't see the energy and then throws it in the salt water I'm really trying to suppress my laughter right now so bear with me let no man deceive you by any means. Yeah. And then wipes you down and, you know, like that, not touching you, know, and then throws it in the salt water and, you know, and then, you know, holds seminars and does this. What have we come to, people? It says by any means. But there's people that are paying good money to learn this. And that's just one thing of a thousand different things out there. But you know what? Okay, let's get on track here. <laughs> After this video, I'm gonna have a good laugh over this. I get because I, I I could. It was like when I saw the video, I just saw it because I was. This was on the thought about what all was out there, all the stuff, all the junk, all the garbage, you know. And you know, because because I because I, I, I do a lot of research about this stuff and see what all is out there, all the the false doctrines, all the junk, and all the you know false spirituality and all that stuff but anyway oh my goodness at any rate let's get back on track here that's just that's just oh my goodness <clears throat> paying good money for this stuff that's just like I said that's just one of, um, of many things that are out there people take seriously they take this stuff they, they honestly say, say well what's 
Or what's what's different between you and you praying, laying hands on somebody and praying for them? But, but because the word of God is going to stand on the world's on fire. This was, <laughs> you know, this was written by men of God. And the power of the Holy Ghost, you know, through God who created. You know, I can look out here and see the creation. That's my evidence right there. You know, that's you know, I, I don't have to, you know, I don't see any energy coming off anybody, and you know, seeing it chopped off and thrown into a, a, a bowl of salt water. You know, I can look out and see the creation of God. <laughs> I know when the Lord saved me, I felt it in my heart, and the faith that He's put in my heart. And see the miracles. You no, know, recently I think I told this the other day. Uh, family, our church, a woman of our church, her brother, was on life support. All of his organs had shut down. Doctors had given up on him. Said, "No, sorry." Said he's, you know, he's, you know, he's. We can't do anything else. That's just it. His organs are shut down. He's on life support. He's just, he's, you know, that's just it. We can't do anything. Prayed for him. Church prayed for him, you know. And uh, he's, <laughs> he's on his way to recovery. The Lord moved on that. See, that's, and that's, that's, that's other evidence right there. So God's alive. <laughs> the Lord Jesus is alive. The Holy Ghost is alive. But let's get back into the thought. I just want to throw that in there. That's what I'm saying. Let no man deceive you by any means. People being deceived. See, that's what I'm talking about. Talking about the things. How close are we? This could be a two part or a two or three parter. Or I good grief an entire series. By all this stuff, it says for that day that day what day the day of Christ for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first one of the signs and guess what we are there right now well, wait, wait a minute brother wait. yes yes we are but wait a minute, we're seeing, we're seeing these, uh, we're seeing these churches full, and you know these, look at, look at these, uh, these, these TV churches, you know they're full, and they're, you know they're the, they're the size of stadiums and everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's talk about that for a minute. You've got. The churches, the small churches, preaching the true word of God, out of the old KJV, that are singing out the old red back or blue back. I've seen those too. We got some of those too. Hymnals. The old country churches disappearing. Hardly any younger people coming to those anymore because they're wanting excitement wanting flashing lights wanting people jumping up and down wanting loud music wanting you know a shout it's all in a shout and all in a big show so where are you going to go going to go in a place that has you know a, something like that enter in the big mega church. Okay. Now let's dissect that a little bit. Let's see another one. Not saying all of them are like this. They're saying God's word but that in there would come a time in the last day that there would be there would be a famine 
in the lands. Not, not of bread, not of water, but of hearing of the word of God. The true word of God being preached. So, as I've preached before in the past, and I want to reiterate, bring it right back up again. And I will continue to do so as much as the Lord says to do it. We have a twofold, two, twofold, falling away. Number one is the one that everybody can see, a visual falling away. People leaving the church, or church is. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some that are leaving the institutional churches, the church building, okay? And they are going to these home churches. People are making, are doing these home churches. Ain't got a problem with that whatsoever. They're gathering together, they're having service, and doing good. God bless them. That's wonderful. But you're still having people that are doing, they're having a falling away. That are leaving the church. People, actually, let's just say this, leaving, that are not, that are just going out and leaving the church and saying, I'm done with it. I'm done with God. I'm never going back. I don't want to have anything to do with church, with God's people, with God, with Jesus anymore. I'm tired of it. I want to live my life and not have anything more to do with it. So you have that falling away right there. That visual falling away person. And they don't want to, and they basically apostatize. Apostasy. Apostasy. Is that a word? <laughs> they go into apostasy. There you go. They totally go into apostasy. They forsake the Lord. They forsake their salvation. Well, bro, you can't do that. Uh, yeah. According to God's word, you can. I know you once saved, always saved people out there. You irresistible grace people. You don't want to hear that. But I've got scripture to back it up. I know you don't want to hear it. And you'll fight tooth and nail to the very end. But you're not arguing with me. You're going to be arguing with the word of God. When I show you the scriptures, and I've said the scriptures before in my other teachings and messages, I've said that. So I don't want to argue with you about it. I'm just going to point out the scriptures and say, look, here they are. It's up to you to either accept them or not. But you can go into apostasy and forsake the word of God, forsake your salvation, turn away from God, jump out of his protective hand and turn away from him and walk away and never come back. And guess what? He'll let you. He will let you. What? You know what? Nothing can snatch me out of his hand. Right. Nothing can snatch you out of his hand. Absolutely 100% correct. But you can jump out of his hand, walk away, and he'll let you. Because you have the free choice and the free will to do so. He, he doesn't want you to. Absolutely not. He doesn't want you to. But he'll let you. He loves you and he doesn't want you to. Okay. Second. Second falling away. First one we had the visual falling away. The actual physical falling away. Second one is what I said. The falling away. Not uh, not of the falling away. Uh, uh, you know, no, not, not the famine in the land. Not of bread and water. But of the word of God. We have the falling away in the churches of the true preached word of God. And that is where a lot of people is not seeing it. And not thinking about it. 
See, originally when we're talking about following Luke, we're, we're just thinking that people just stopped going to churches and the doors of the churches are going to close and everybody's just going to stop going to church and the church is just going to uh, just go away and everybody is just going to, you know, there's just going to be no more churches anymore. The second fold falling away is people are going to be in the churches. But they're going to be preaching a doctrine, a false doctrine of man and whatever else that they want to bring in there. <laughs> there's, I said, I haven't mentioned this in a long, long time, but there's, there's Christian yoga. Research yoga and find out where that come from. Everybody thinks, oh, that's just harmless. No, it's not. Research it. Find out what its roots come from. I wouldn't be surprised eventually if they start having Christian pranic healing. Oh, throw it in the salt water. And other stuff that's been allowed to come in the church. Because why? Because the enemy's been allowed to come in. Come in slyly. Well, we don't do that way anymore. That's too tough. We don't worry too much about that repentance because we just come in because we want to get people in and they'll find their own way. And we can be good and moral people and... You know, no, we don't talk about the blood anymore. That bloody religion. That's that's old. That's old fashioned. We don't talk about that anymore because that, that turns people off. People said that. People have said that. Where are we at without the blood and the redemption that the Lord Jesus offered? And the repentance from sin. <laughs> Twofold falling away. People's blind to the, that second falling away. That's why we're in the shape. And these are your churches are in the shape that they're in right now. Some of these bigger ones. Like I said, I'm not saying all of them. Don't get me wrong, okay? I'm not, I'm not lumping all of them because some of them are not. But a good portion of it. Like I said, I can't, I can't watch. Like I said, I, 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 I've, I've attested to this before in some of these videos. I can't watch anymore. Used to, like I said, I've told this before, I used to watch uh, some of these uh, when I'd get ready on Sunday morning or start I'd eat breakfast and get ready to go to church on Sunday mornings. I'd, I'd watch some of these uh, some of these churches on TV because some of them were, you know, pretty rich ministries. Pretty big churches. I couldn't watch them. <laughs> couldn't watch them because what they were teaching, what they were preaching. I, I'd get I'd get so fired up. And I was, that, that ain't right. What a, you know, and I... I and I'd end up fired up at church. I'd be sitting there. I, I, I end up, I, I'd be hearty, but I am mad <laughs> by the time I'd get to church because what was being pre was being preached by these televangelists. I'd be like, Can you believe what I was listening to this morning by this preacher and you know, people? You know, you know, it's people at church. Are you? you are you okay? They're like, yeah, some of these preachers, what are they preaching? You know, bring it out in Sunday school. Say, yeah, I was listening this morning. The, this preacher talking about this. Can you know, you know, you know how it is. Some of you guys out there are the same way. You get aggravated at some of these, what these pr people preach and what they teach. The love of money is the root of all evil. Twofold falling away. How close are we? How close are we to our departure? Like I said, laying aside the thought of our individual departures, which can happen at any time, any moment. So, we've seen, we've talked about, we've discussed, we have a twofold falling away. It said first, Except there come a falling away first. Okay, at what point are we at? 
at this two-fold falling away that we're seeing. We see, are we at the first edge of it? Midpoint? Ladder part? Now that I can't see. I'll say this, I'm seeing more and more of these churches, more and more of these smaller churches, their congregations just dwindling away. As I said, these smaller churches that were preaching the Word of God, now their younger people are, lit, are gone, and it's just the elderly people that are left, and they're starting to pass on. And when they're gone, the church is going to be gone. That's a sad thing. And they're starting to go into these bigger churches. And the problem with that is, if these people go in from these churches that were brought up in those true ways, the repentance, the true repentance the blood sacrifice and redemption of the Lord Jesus Christ. If they go in and try to change, then they're going to get run out of there. Because that's not allowed. That's not popular this day. It's not going to be allowed in these churches nowadays. Does that, does that make sense? Because that's, you know, uh, the, you know why? Because guess what? That's not, that's not going to bring in the money. And you know, you know, I'm telling the truth. If, if you know, if there's a board of directors, uh, if there's a deacon board, most of the time it's not even a deacon board nowadays. It's a board of directors now, just to bring in the money. We gotta get in more money. Gotta get more money. Gotta get more because we gotta build. We gotta add on. We gotta add on. Uh, you know, gotta put in the swimming pool. We gotta add in tennis court. We gotta add in the huge disc. We gotta do that. If you preach this stuff. It's going to turn people off and they're going to start leaving. Or rather, you're just talking judgment and judgment and judgment. Well, where does it say it talks about that judgment? It must first begin at the house of God. Some of these churches, if I was invited to preach at, if, if they let me get through even half my message, or if they let me get through all the message, <laughs> they, I would, they did, they, my card, they'd lose my card or burn my card and my information, they, and they'd trash it. It'd be like, see ya. And be back. Wouldn't be no invitation for me to come back. Saying, were you so special? No. But I'm going to preach the Word of God. Without fear, without favor, I'm going to preach it exactly like it says it. I ain't going to, I ain't going to cut no corners. It ain't going to be nothing. I ain't going to be no flowery speech. It's just going to be right down the line. Now, I know other preachers and teachers, That's going to, that's going it's going to be the same way. They're going to be the same way. I'm with a, a group of ministers. That's... That, 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 that's Part of that old-fashioned preaching that's that that preaches the exact same way. They, they they're not going to give any ground. They're not going to back up. They're going to preach the same thing. They're going to preach the word of God, and it's not popular anymore. They want to have their ears tickled? They like I said, you know that's that. Where are we? We're in those days right now where the following way is going on. At what point we're at, like I said, I said we can just gauge it by what we're seeing right now. Or where we are. By how many churches we see. I said I keep an eye out. I, I listen. I keep my kind of my ear to the ground, so to speak, and you know, see, you know. How many churches, the smaller churches and the larger churches, I kind of keep an eye out and stuff. I think 
any good preacher, teacher, minister, you know, pastor should do that. It kind of aligns too with being, you know, a watchman, you know. You do that. Because if you see something going on, you know, what, you know, you're supposed to do what? You know, blow that trumpet, right? Just in general, being in the church world, you know, <laughs> if you see the enemy coming, you see something going on that you need to warn the church, your, you know, your brothers and sisters, your, you know, your, your, uh, your family, anybody, you know, you're being a watchman, you know, being a good steward of God's word, being a minister, then you watch, you pray, being a good soldier. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. You watch the enemy's movements. You watch what he's doing. Since so scepter come a falling away first. We're seeing that. But look at what comes next. The eyes read this, you know what comes next. It says, And that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. Say, so, well, man, you know, do that, you know. Does doesn't it say that the the, temp, the temples, the third temple's got to be rebuilt, or the temple of God's got to be rebuilt, and He's going to walk in and declare Himself to be. Well, that's coming. You know, we got word that you know our, the U.S. Embassy is going to be moved over there. You know, it's turmoil. The Israel's surrounded by its enemies right now, and at any time, you know, stuff. How do we know? How do we know that some of that stuff is not going on right now? Do you think? Do you? Do you be. Yeah. Do you really think we're, we're told everything that is going on by the news? Why do you think I don't listen to the mainstream news? I've told you guys, how many times, I don't, I've not mentioned it in a while, just, you know, God, and, you know, I go through secondary news sources. If you want news, what's going on, listen to overseas news, like Israeli news and other news like that, because you'll get the, you'll get the clearest picture of what's going on, because it doesn't get filtered through the news over here because we only get filtered news of what's going on I would say we, we get what they want us to hear okay I know you guys know that surely you guys know that so how do we know all this stuff is going that doesn't look some of this stuff doesn't say that we would, some of the stuff that we would absolutely know and see, right? Well, that's a thought. Doesn't say some of the stuff that we would absolutely see with our own eyes. Now, there's a thought. Some of the stuff may happen without our knowledge. Behind the scenes. Some of this stuff may be happening in the spiritual that only is spiritually discerned. Christian, open up your spiritual eyes. Pray for wisdom, spiritual knowledge, and understanding. Before we close, most of all, if you are not saved and you're listening to this, we just went through some things that outline of what's going on in the last days that we're in. If you are not saved and the Lord is calling you to an altar of repent, He's drawing you with His Spirit, saying, Right now is the time I want to save you. I want you to come. And ask for repentance. I want you to repent from your sins. Come into my. Yeah, I want you to come, come to an altar of repentance. And I'll save you. Ask me to come into your heart. Very simple. Child understands. Lord, I want you to save me. Forgive me for my sins. I want to serve you for the remainder of my days. Lord, come into your heart, or come into my heart, free me from my sins.
and save me. All that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's like I said, so simple a child can understand it. And the Lord will come into your heart. Take up his abode in it, the Bible says, and we'll save you. After that point, he saves you and comes into your heart. He says, makes a new creature. That would be a new creation, a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. At that point, start studying the Word of God. Start praying to the Lord. Start gaining in strength. Start asking for the wisdom, the spiritual knowledge and understanding of the Word of God. Find you a good congregation of believers, whether that be a home church, you know, people that gather in their home on Saturday or Sunday, whichever, whatever. It can be any day, any night or something like that. As long as they're preaching out of the Word of God, and I still believe the King James Bible is the Bible that God wanted the English-speaking people to have. Okay? Or church, whatever. Be a church building or a home church. Just find a good congregation of believers that's going to preach and teach you the word of God. Pray that the Lord will send you to church. See, he can guide and direct you to where he wants you to go. Because he'll have a work for you to do. So, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I'm not saying he's going to put you up and throw you up behind a pulpit first time you work or walk into a church. But you can stand there and you, you can clap your hands to a song, can't you? You can raise your hand up in the air and worship, can't you? See, he can, he's got his spirit inside of you, and you'll want to do that. You'll want to worship him. He's calling you to the altar of repentance, and you're tired of what you're living, the way you're living. The enemy has left you high and dry. Sin has left you high and dry. See, sin will take you further than you want to go further than you want to go and, and, it, and it, 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 it's you know it'll leave you it'll leave you comfortless leave you without anything leave you without friends without family without any loved ones but the Lord's right there got his hand down so as the old song oh Christian song, come unto me and I will give you rest. If he's drawn to the altar of men, just ask the Lord to come in your heart and save you. And he will. Now if you ask the Lord to save you, praise the Lord. Very simple. Not a child can understand it. Uh, I'm going to close right there. Like I said, if, if I hope something's been said in this message that will help you, and like I said, kind of spurns you to start studying and start asking that question, how close are we? Start studying the Word of God and look into yourself and maybe, you know, start questioning your, in your mind and start studying out, you know. Where are we? Where are we in this time and this day and age? We just hit a little bit of it in Second Thessalonians. There's other scriptures, other verses that we could have got into. Like I said, we could do a whole series like this, talking about the end times and everything that's that you know that we're in and the signs that we're looking at. So this was just a small part of it. So do some studying for yourself. But most of all, if you're a new convert, if you're a young Christian, like I said, start studying the Word of God and start praying and seeking the Lord uh, and gather strength. You know, the He is going to be your source and the Word of God is going to be your source of strength and comfort. So, and uh, just grow in the grace and knowledge of God. Like I said, I just feel like there's somebody out there <laughs> who's going to listen that needs that needs the Lord. 
just ask the Lord to come into your heart and ask him to save you. Repent from your sins. Turn to the Lord. Say, Lord, forgive me. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. And I'll serve you the remainder of my days. That's, that's it. That's salvation. He died on the cross. I know that you died on the cross. You were put in that tomb. Three days later, he rose from the dead. You ascended back to the Father. Now you sat at the right hand of God, making intercession and prayer. He said, All the call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That blood sacrifice. they did for us. So, anyway. God bless each and every one of you. And uh, blessings of Christ bless each and every one of you. Prayer warriors, remember those dates uh, on those, uh, those satanic holidays that I mentioned and, uh, you know, those, uh, those Wiccan holidays. Uh, remember those in prayer. Pray against them. And uh, you spiritual warriors meet me on the battlefield, as I always say. Let's march against the enemy together. All right. All right. Uh, take care. And uh, see you guys in the next video. All right. Bye now.